every development is uh, has tons of risk, tons of struggle, um, a, a lot of moving pieces, um, and, and and particularly when you're redeveloping a, a, a city, then then you're kind of overcoming barriers that have made prior people not not uh, you know go after a certain project. So you have all that, and then you have this sense of and sometimes it can be pretty nebulous, right? It's uh, where it's, mm, what's going on here? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, you know, it's a big part of, of development is the confidence that people have in the developer. And, and that's where bias can be particularly introduced. Um, this sense of, are you able to do it? <laughs> you know, even once they believe that it can be done, which was a struggle for Detroit for years, um, then it's can you do it, and and so and and that's where it gets to be pretty nebulous. But even some of the the hard measurements of can you do it um, then get back to kind of historical, uh, um, you know, uh, historical discrimination and and how that affects people and and where they are financially now. And so it's a uh, one of the things I talk to uh, new developers a, a lot about is is something that that everyday Americans just, you know, have, have a hard time just imagine. Um, there's a big measure um, that for commercial projects of a developer's liquidity. And, and so that's this concept of extra money that you don't need and aren't using. And so, so you know, the, the idea of having any extra money that you don't need and aren't using um, just to handle problems should they pop up is, is is something that most Americans don't experience. And so, and disproportionately black and brown don't. And so as you get into larger projects, you need more and more liquidity. And, and so being able to have that liquidity to, to convince banks that uh, you are a competent risk is, is a big, big barrier. Um, and then partnering with that liquidity if you don't have it yourself in an in a equitable uh, way is uh, is another barrier, and so so part of being a, a a black or brown developer is bringing in that kind of historic um, uh, lack of access to to equity and 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 capital and and liquidity into a process where you're trying to uh, convince people that that to have confidence in your abilities and your financial wherewithal and achieving that in a in an equitable way. Uh, Rod, at Urge, you've been really focused on trying to get Black developers more opportunities, uh, get more people, um, you know, prepared for uh, the challenges that they're going to face if they if they want to do uh, if they want to do those kind of things here in the city. Uh, talk about the, the the barriers that you see that still exist and the kind of help that's available um, from Urge and other places. Yeah, I think, thanks, Stephen. It's a uh, it's a real challenge and a real issue. Um, and I always just frame for folks, you know, to become a developer of, of size and scale, right? It took me 20 years of working on Wall Street, right? And saving a couple pennies here and there. And that gave me a chance to start. You know, oftentimes I'm on a, another conversation, I'll ask that question, how many people can kind of match that? Most people can say no, no matter what they look like, right? And so if you can add on the historical challenges we have, makes it really challenging and hard. And access to capital becomes a significant barrier for that, right? Those historical barriers and at lack of equity and home ownership, when you add that compounding effect over generations, it adds up that most black and brown folks don't have an extra dollar, let alone half a million dollars, right? To say, I will take a risk with and invest. And so we have to find, create, be, one, we have to be real and acknowledge that is a real barrier and as a real issue. And if we acknowledge it's a real issue, then what can we do to help solve that? Um, one, we, we try to help folks understand that you have to be as um, proficient, efficient, and effective and as knowledgeable as talented as possible. There is no, you know, there is no way to replace, are you good at what you do, right? So whether it be through, you know, um, uh, read organization um, that I'm on the leadership team for, as well as, or just working with educational developers, you got to make have that as a starting point. And if you have that as a starting point, then the question is, how do we make this process easier for you? And that was one of the reasons why we partnered with uh, Invest Detroit and Kresge to launch Ebiera, which is the kind of the first of its kind fund to invest in black and brown, not develop, 
mint projects, but the firms themselves, because there's a certain level of, um, uh, of achievement when someone invests in your company. And I always kind of make the analogy, no one in the, no one ever told the founders of Google, we will only invest in the Google algorithm, but you should work at Walmart and starve to death or starve to death, okay. right? However, you know, that's what they say to developers every day. We'll invest in your product, but we don't care how you eat or survive. Well, that's not a long-term solution for growth and scale and, uh, and success. And so Ebiera starts that process of providing that capital into the firms. And that may end up going to projects, some of it going to running the business, uh, but that gives you a leg forward and a push forward to give you, to let folks know that you are ready for that next level of preparation. And it eases the burden and some historical legacy challenges of maybe just not having the same access to capital as some of our peers may have. And we think we think that along with the wraparound support we provide by providing them guidance, exposure, access that we may have garnered, that makes them much more successful. Jason, uh, I want to have you talk specifically about uh, the area where your business focuses, which is housing, which I feel like um, adds another level of difficulty, I guess, uh, to, the, to the problem. Number one, you are really focused on, on affordable housing and uh, housing that gives people access who didn't have it before. Um, but, but housing in general is also a, a, a riskier proposition, I think, sometimes in places like Detroit. So, so, so tell me how these barriers uh, that all Black developers uh, face in Detroit and around the country play out in, in, in your world uh, of housing. So yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, you know, there are many challenges and barriers. One is, you know, there are a lot of folks that don't necessarily know or think that purchasing a home uh, is for them. And I think that, you know, communicating that home ownership is for African-Americans and black folks is something that's utterly important. But besides just letting them know, it's also the education around it to allow them to be able to succeed. So providing those services as it relates to credit repair and coaching and pre and post purchase, uh, housing counseling so that people are properly prepared for it. Because, you know, in the city of Detroit, we have a vast amount of single family housing and homes, but we also have a ton of renters. I know mm -hmm. that, that that tide has changed a little bit, but in the past, but the, the idea and the reality is the 85% African American city, uh, we need to change that and turn that around to create more opportunity and show people that, you know, there is access to being a homeowner in a healthy, safe neighborhood in the city of Detroit. You can transition that uh, to other heights uh, going forward. But, you know, you're absolutely right that there are those challenges uh, in the marketplace that we look to address by providing some of those services around people to provide them uh, the access to be able to meet them where they are to succeed, to move up. And without providing that different information, you know, people don't think necessarily think that's for them. I, I started my career uh, in property management doing, you know, managing Martin Luther King homes and, and, and affordable housing in the city. And folks would, you know, turn 18 or 17 and go get an apartment, not knowing that there's a career that they could have and then take that career to be able to have a house or a home to build a family and raise it within a neighborhood and a community. And that's something that we have to get back to, because at the end of the day, in each neighborhood, you know, there has to be that spur of development. So the little boys and girls that live there actually feel that they have a clean, safe uh, opportunity to grow up in a neighborhood, but also have a part of ownership in that neighborhood, which is utterly important. 